So you remember we discussed this kind of phenomena or experiments. There was one body at rest, another one was moving. There was a collision between them, the one stuck on the other. And after the collision, both moved to the right. However, they moved with a velocity that is lower than the velocity of this one before the shock. Now, I make these experiments really in the classroom. And then I ask my pupils, what did you observe with your eyes? No explanation, only observation. Well, simple. First, this one was addressed, one was moving. And then both were moving. Okay, both are moving, but are they moving? With what velocity are they moving? Oh yes, they are slower than this one. Okay, that was what we have seen with our eyes. Now, the explanation. And when I ask explanation, please tell me what is going on with momentum. Well, and the answer is always, in all the classes I've ever taught, well, the momentum has distributed over both of them. So, they use the same wording as when some other material thing is distributing. For instance, I'm distributing these books on, on three tables. And that's the same wording they use. You see that when the pupils have this, use this wording, they have the correct idea about momentum as an extensive or substance-like quantity. So we note on the blackboard, momentum can be distributed over several bodies. This is in the senior high school book. In the junior high school book, they made it already. Perhaps I prefer to explain you the junior high school version because this should be done before. So forget this for a while, this figure. I have the air track and I have one of the chariots, the gliders. I give it a kick, only one. It's going, it's running on the air track and when it comes to the end of the, it shocks to, the, to a bumper, but there's no spring. I put this stuff so it sticks. Again, here's the, uh, the chariot. I give it a kick, it's moving, and tuck, it stands. Well, what is the observation? Well, the chariot is moving and then it stops, it kicks. Well, now, what is the explanation? And this is interesting now. At the beginning, when we, has, we have been teaching this for the first time, we were afraid about the explanation. Anyway, when you ask this to the pupils, you see, they don't know. Well, so let us find out. Imagine we put the whole air, air track on wheels. That's the air track. This is to support. That's our glider moving here. And we have seen it run against this bumper and came to a stop. Now imagine we put the air track on wheels. What will happen? I asked the question to the students. Now I ask it to you. Somebody will answer? Ah, it's the answer. Okay. The whole air track will move. Very good, I say to the pupils. Very good. Does it move quickly? No. Very good, again. So, now imagine the air track is not on the wheels. The air track is on the table. And now we put wheels on the table. And we make again the experiment. Tuck, boom. What will happen? The table may move. Will it move quickly? Fast? No. Slow. Even slower than before. Now we put the wheels away. We put wheels under the school building. No. And we make the experiment. Tuck, again. What will happen? The school building will move. Will it move quickly? No, no, very slowly. Well, by the way, yeah, I forgot to say, the, the interpretation each time is, if we have wheels under the air track, 
What has happened with the momentum? Oh, question to you again. In the first case, wheels under the air track. What is going on with the momentum of the chariot after it is pumped? Yeah, yeah. Well, and the important thing is not the whole momentum goes, it distributes over it. There's also some momentum left in the chariot. Well, now then, we have wheels under the building, the momentum distributes on the building, on the chair, on the air track, on the table, on the, uh, on the body, and on everything what's in the, within the building. Yeah, next step, we take the wheels away from the school building. What's going on with the momentum? So now we have the answer to this first question. I, now we have not wheels, uh, not any wheels, with just the air track, and it bumps to the end. And when I now ask again, where has the momentum gone? The answer is into the earth. However, it is strange because you do not notice the momentum anymore. Because the change of velocity of the Earth is so slight that you cannot notice that the momentum is coming. And now I must make a remark for you, the teachers, because I don't know if you are surprised. Our argument up to here is based on the fact that momentum is conserved. You might think that the pupils could also believe that simply the momentum is destroyed. You know, it disappeared. How do students know that momentum is conserved? It is the strategy of our teaching. We spoke about momentum in a way as we speak about water. When I have water in a glass and after a while it has disappeared and I ask what has appeared, uh, what has um, happened with the water? When I ask what happened with the water, where is it? then students will look for a place where they find it. Either it is on the ground, or somebody drank it, or it is evaporated in the air, but it is somewhere. So whenever, in, when teaching, you always ask, where is it, where is it, where has it gone, where has it come from? Then you presuppose, you, you, you suggest that there is no possibility of destruction or uh, uh, creation. Perhaps you remember when you introduce electric charge. I think, or usually, as it is usually done in, in the school uh, curriculum, you do not mention conservation of electric charge because you introduce it in such a way that it appears normal to the student that it is conserved. So it seems, uh, or for the pupils, it seems if you, have, if you introduce a substance like quantity, it seems rather natural that this quantity is conserved. This was a little excursion to the junior high school version. There we make, we make this discussion in rather detail, whereas in the junior, in the senior book, you will see this goes very quickly because they all learned this already in the junior version. So therefore, in the senior version, you have only this experiment or this figure where a body is shocking here, but here we have an elastic um, collision and it goes back. And here also we ask what has gone, uh, if you have positive momentum, you have negative momentum, where is the difference? And of course the difference has gone into the earth. So when you use the senior uh, uh, version book and you are, at this, you are at this point, you should dedicate some time to, to the discussion of the possibility that momentum goes the earth. Ah, yeah, and here's the inelastic momentum flows into the earth again. Mm. Well, now again, I have a problem with because um, I skipped the vector character of the momentum. We are at chapter 2-2, two, two, and the first half of it is for linear movements, uh, translational uh, movements, uh, whereas the second part is vectorial where the uh, collisions, where the vectorial character of the, um, of the momentum is important. I skip this. Uh, and now comes, uh, we come to chapter 2.3. However, well, it depends. In principle, I don't have to say very much because Mikey Pollock did it 
already before. We make this experiment. Just take a board of wood, two rollers, and any object, a book or something like that. And I throw it, well, I take this book and I throw it in a way that it glides over the, oh, well, I'm not prepared for it. But if this is a book, I throw it like this over the board. What happens, of course, is the whole thing is gets them finally for you, the teachers, physicists. It is clear that's nothing else than an inelastic collision. However, the difference between the collision with before, this is very short and you don't see what happens. But here it is it takes a time until both have the same velocity. Well, for the pupils, the question now is, the question is always, for at least for two or three hours of teaching, the question is always, where does the momentum go? Where does it come from? And in this case, the students know the answer. Well, at the beginning, this has momentum, this has no momentum, because it stands still. And then, momentum is going from this to that. Momentum is going from one to the, to the other until, until the velocities are the same. Well, Something we so we can formulate a rule. Well, of course, a condition in order to happen this flow of momentum is that here we have friction. If there's no friction, if we glide over it without a momentum transfer. 如果没有摩擦的话 ，A 就直接飞走了，啊，就是直接飞出去了，没有这个动量的转移。So we have the result in a frictional process. Momentum goes from the body of higher velocity to that of lower. Which one of these has positive momentum? And strangely, to my surprise, they always said to the right it is positive. And how do you know? Well, that's in mathematics. That's always right is positive. And I say, yes, that's true, but this is a convention. We agree upon this. We could, just, we could have defined it just the other way around. Well, I, I think we have to come to an end. So if, if the, negative direc uh, the positive, positive direction is defined to be uh, to, to the left, then what is the flow of momentum? Pardon? Uh, if positive direction to Would the you, left, yeah. Uh, what will be the direction the of momentum. the flow of momentum? Positive momentum to the left. Yes. Yeah. It is velocity of momentum. Is that momentum from the small object to the large object? The flow of momentum will be different. Will be different. Yeah, that's right. 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 Uh, from Newton's mechanical it's system, a, a, a Newton's mechanical system, when you compare two vectors, mm -hmm. you only consider the magnitude. Only can, uh, consider the magnitude, for example, this one, mm -hmm. uh, 20 always larger mm -hmm. than 10. Yeah. And if one is this direction, another one this direction, this one is always larger than this one. No. And you know that, yeah, but normally you do not need to compare two vectors because you do not formulate this rule. So, so at the end, I would like to say two sentences more. I would finish by saying two sentences about this uh, problem. So it was very interesting, this experience, to see that most uh, uh, vivid uh, discussions came up when we just discussed about questions of signs and directions. And indeed, according to my teaching experience, mechanics is one of the reasons that mechanics is difficult is the fact that all the important quantities are vector quantities. This is the same in Newtonian as in the KPK mechanics. You know all these paradoxes with one force and this force and you have, a, a, for instance, a string, and there's one force and the opposite force, and do they compensate, or uh, are, is the total force twice that? All these problems are due to the fact that you have to do with vectorial quantities. And this, of course, can be avoided in KPK. So you have seen, up to this point, before, before I formulated this sentence, 
everything was simple and pupils understand it very easily. However, when you enter the question of signs and directions, it becomes more complicated, although what they learn about physics is not very much. So these are more mathematical questions. Yeah. So you have here, you have more kind of pedagogical uh, problem. What we want is that at least in the junior high school course, that the students come quickly to important, interesting physical results, and that is why we avoid the ve vector uh, uh, character of momentum as far as possible. We treat the vector property only at the very end, and we get very good results. We proceed to even the, the connections between momentum and energy, all without the uh, uh, speaking about the Fourier character. And by the way, when I am teaching and I have a school class which is not very bright, then I skip this sentence. I skip this rule because all the problems come up the first time when we have this rule. Just skip it. Uh, if students are bright, then you can do it. And then you have all these discussions where just uh, here. Now, one of the problems that you will have if you are teaching only 15 hours and you want to get to some in interesting results, try to avoid to discuss too much about all these problems, directions and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, signs and so on. Because oh. it's ah, so true. easy to confuse people. Yeah? For me, I think I will stop here. Thank you.